In this video, we're going to look at how to add and subtract rational functions. Adding rational functions is very similar to adding regular fractions. There's two different ways that we look at this. The first one is when we have the same denominators. The second one is when we have different denominators. We're going to look at the same denominators first just so we can get the concept down. In this problem, I have two functions. I have f of x is x squared plus 5x over x squared minus 9 and g of x is 6 over x squared minus 9. Notice the denominators are the same, they're both x squared minus 9, therefore my domain is the same. It's x cannot equal positive or negative 3. Now we're going to add them together. So we're going to put them together. Let's put the addition sign in between them. And when I add them, I'm literally just going to add the tops, and since we're adding fractions, the denominator stays the same. It's x squared minus 9. Now, just like when you're adding regular fractions, sometimes we have to reduce them. Now, when we're looking at quadratics or polynomials, reducing them means we have to actually factor the problems out to see if we can cancel anything out. It's not as simple as regular numbers. So if we look at this piece, we can factor the top, the x squared plus 5x plus 6, to x plus 2 times x plus 3. We can factor the bottom to x plus 3 and x minus 3. Since we have an x plus 3 on the top and the bottom, we can cancel those out, and you're left with x plus 2 over x minus 3. Now, when you're looking at that, your domain is still x cannot equal positive or negative 3. Same thing when we're looking at multiplication and division. The domain of the original functions has to be represented in the domain of my final function. So that's how we add rational functions with the same denominator. Let's look what happens if we have a different denominators. So here we've got these two looking really complex problems. But we're going to have to take it step by step to so make sure we actually do this right. The first thing we're going to look at though is how do we actually add fractions that have different denominators? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to get the same denominator. So we're going to take these denominators and we're going to factor them apart. So this 6 becomes 2 times 3, and this 15 becomes 5 times 3. Now what we want to look at is what piece is missing in this first fraction from the second part, or from the denominator, and what piece is missing in the second fraction from the denominator in the first part. And if you look at it, that this one is missing a 2, and this one over here is missing a 5. So we're going to take this fraction, and we're going to multiply the first fraction by the 5, and the second fraction by the 2. So now the denominators will have everything that we need in it. So when we look at that, now the denominators are both 30. So 5 times 5 is 25 over 30, 3 times 2 is 6 over 30. And now we just add together, same way we did it when we had the same denominators. Once the denominators are the same on the bottom, we can just add straight across. Now let's look at these problems, because the bottoms just look way out there. There's a lot of stuff that we have to do in them. So the first thing we really want to be able to do is we have to factor those denominators out so we can see really what the pieces are, and then we can see what's missing. This might be a surprise, and actually there's not much missing in these two problems, even though they look quite different. So the first thing I'm going to do for each of these functions is we're going to factor them out. So let's take the first one the f of x, every one of these has a 2 and an x in it. So let's factor out that 2x, and I'm left with x squared, x, 6x squared minus 11x plus 3. And now i got to factor this out in here again. And we end up with 3 over 2x times 3x minus 1 times 2x minus 3. Okay, now that we've got that one completely factored out, and as simple as I can get it, Let's look at g of x. Take out what we can take out of the front, and we end up with taking out the 10 and the x, and then the 3x minus 1. And I'm going to take this one step further, and I'm going to break that 10 up into 5 times a 2 and an x. Just because I know I have a 2x over in this one, and I wanted to be able to see it in this one. Sometimes if you saw that, you didn't actually have to take that step, but visually it looks a little bit better. Now, the next thing we want to look at is, well, what's missing? 
what's missing from over here that's in this one? Well, this one over here, the f of x, is missing 5. It's the only thing. The 2x is there, the 3x minus 1 is there. The only thing that's not there is that 5. So this one's missing the 5. What's missing over in the g of x? Well, I have the 2x, I have the 3x minus 1. I'm missing this 2x minus 3. So that's missing the 2x minus 3. Now that we know what pieces are missing, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by those parts. So this one becomes 3 times 5 over 5 times 2x times 3x minus 1 times 2x minus 3. And this one, I'm putting the 2x minus 3 on the top and the bottom. Now you might be saying to yourself, that bottom looks crazy. There's lots of stuff going on in there. Well, you don't have to foil it back out and get it back into a quadratic. Leave it in the factors because sometimes we're going to be able to actually cancel stuff out later on and that's going to make my life a little bit easier. And if not, I can use it to find my domains and stuff in my final problem and we don't have to do all that extra work. So now that we know what's missing, let's put it all back together. So we're going to put the addition inside of it and you can see it's the exact same thing I had on the other page. Now we're going to do our multiplication. So we have the 3 times 5 is 15, plus, now I did distribute those back out because I have to put these two things together. But notice the bottom I did not. The only thing I actually did was I multiplied the 5 times the 2 to get the 10x. The other ones I left there. So we have the 2x squared minus x minus 3 from the x plus 1 times 2x minus 3. Now that I've got that, I can put those two pieces back together. And you have 2x squared minus x plus 12 over this bottom. Now if you look at the top real quick here, we doing a quick trying to factor it in our heads. You have the 2 times the 12 is 24. Is there any numbers that multiply to 24? That's going to give me a negative 1 in the middle. Not that I can come up off, off the top of my head really easily. Which means it's probably not going to simplify down out the bottom anyway. So therefore, that's my answer. And we also have to make sure we have our domain still. So in this case, my domain is the 0, is the negative 1 third from that piece, and the 2 thirds from that piece. So since I didn't cancel anything out, those are the domains for my original problems as well. So I didn't have to actually add anything in or subtract anything. And that's how we add fractions with different denominators or rational functions. So let's look at subtraction. Subtraction is actually the exact same thing as addition. We just have to do the different operation on the top. So if they're the same denominators, we're just subtracting the tops, the bottoms stay the same. If they're different denominators, like the one we're going to do here, we have to get the same denominator, and then we subtract the tops instead of adding them. So let's look at this one right here. We have x minus 1 over x plus 1, and x plus 1 over x minus 1. So we need to figure out what's missing in each one. Now nice, the nice thing about these is they're already as simple as they can get. So what's missing in this one is this one. And that's actually one method you can always use if you have different denominators. You can actually always just take the two denominators and multiply them together. Some problems, like the last one that we did, it would have made the problem so overwhelming that we probably wouldn't have wanted to do that. But in this problem, it's actually the simplest way to do it. So we're going to take the first f of x, and we're going to multiply the top and bottom by x minus 1. And g of x, we're going to multiply it by x plus 1. Now, the bottoms are the same, and I'm not going to refoil those back out. So I'm going to leave those just as they are down the bottom there. The tops, I do need to foil back out because I have to put them together, and I can't take the multiplication and put it together like that. So we foil this one out, we get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus, this one's x squared plus 2x plus 1, and now we want to put the tops together, and when you put the tops together, you end up getting just the negative 4x. Everything else cancels out. x squared minus x squared, gone. Negative 2x minus 2x, negative 4x. 1 minus 1, it's gone. And the bottom, I just leave like that. You could foil it out if you wanted to, but you don't have to. And your domain, again, since I factored out the bottom, makes it nice and easy, is x cannot equal plus or minus 1. And that is how you add and subtract rational functions.